God's Garage with Dr. Don Hughes, Dr. Barry Cook, Real Issues, Real Talk. And now, here is Don and Barry. Hey, welcome back to another program of God's Garage. As always, we are your hosts, Barry Cook, Don Hughes. Barry, we have been talking really the last couple months. We've got mm -hmm. so much information on the preparation of apostles, but we could really also say the preparation of any ministry gift right. or purpose or calling. We left off uh, last week with, um, you know, um, hidden from man, the hidden season and the, and, and the fear of man being the snare. Now let's take it a little deeper in, in the concept of divine restraint. And, 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 and I'll read this first comment and you'll feed off of this. It says, divine restraint is necessary to keep apostles or any gifting from acting prematurely. What's our thought about that? <laughs> <laughs> we got 25 minutes. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> well, you know, we started off in this in and and, and Matthew 21, 42, and it says, mm -hmm. um, did you ever read, Jesus said, did you ever read in the scriptures? Which is a great saying next time when someone doesn't know what's going on. Uh, but the stone that the builders rejected um, has the same has become the head of the corner. That is the Lord's doing, and it's a marvelous thing in our eyes. And we talked about <laughs> rejection training, and we focused in on the mm -hmm. fact that many mm -hmm. of the things that we go through deals with this. Then we started going down. We went through a lot of personal illustrations, went through biblical illustrations. Then we rolled down through the snare of man. The fear of man the brings monster. a snare. And this is where we spent our time, you know, most of our time, the last, uh, uh, um, the last particular uh, a session that we had, but then we ended on um, the hidden, how oftentimes God hides people from view until the time of, her, of their showing, which is, says the same thing even about Jesus. Yes, sir. You know, until the time of his coming forth. And so but there's... Why do, Barry, why do we not talk more about that? I mean, Jesus spent 30 years of ministry preparation for three years of ministry. And we, we got that like reversed today. We want this. We want the fast food course, and I don't really think you can find that in the Bible with good results. No. Again, though, you know, there's there's specific things that he was taught. I mean, if you think about this, even his base, by the time he was eight years old, he could quote the first five books of the Bible. So it wasn't like you know he didn't have a biblical knowledge or biblical base or no, something coming no. out. I mean, he had fulfilled those particular things, whether he had to or not. He did it. You know, because it just shows the fact that, and then he's at 12 years old, he's in the temple. Remember, I showed you that paper from the yes, writing, yes, secular yes. writings where, you know, he's schooling them on how the body works, how the astronomy works, how the, you know, the, the, the seasons work and the weather works. And at he's 12 years old. And he's going, yeah, and that's why they were just blown away by it. They're like, okay, what, what's going on here? But that's the point I want to make is what happened? It wasn't time for him yet. Right. And his mother said, boy, where you been? He said, you know, I need to be about my father's business. But it says he submitted and followed because it wasn't yet his time. Now, he said wow. the same thing wow. later on at the wedding when he did the first miracle. Yeah. At yeah. that time, he said, it's not really my time, but it's kind of like, but we're close enough yeah. that I'm going to go ahead and we'll kick this thing yeah, out. Yeah, 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 You know, but when he was 12, yeah, it, it, he, he hadn't got to 30 yet. Right. It was a long way. So, okay. Some and quick... he was more ready then than most of the priests behind the pulpit, but not for the resistance. Right, right, right. And the oppression and the obscurity and the persecution he was going to have to face. Well, and again, we don't preach this because it's not popular, but as soon as the heavens opened, God said, here he is. He said to, to every angelic being, to every person in the planet, and to the satanic system, here's the one y'all been looking for. That's here he is. Here's the seed. Boom. How quickly did the attack come? Oh, man. How quickly did the, the temptation of all of In other words, that temptation proved to himself, no, I am ready. I have passed the test. Yeah. This is in me. I do have it. Yeah. Now I can do the Father's business. And when he will. stood up in Luke chapter 4 and read about himself in the synagogue, it says all the eyes were fashioned, fastened on him. And then he read about himself. He sits down and it says 
and those that watched were furious. Oh, come on. Yes, it did. <laughs> so what happened is the heavens <clears throat> shone light on him, blessed him, and confirmed him. The people as a whole now knew, ooh, this dude is of God. And then the priest and all those people just said, wait, we don't have control of this. Yes, and that's the problem with the whole religious system. I, so we're talking about divine restraint, and we're talking about all the whys. This, I believe, directly goes back to the quality of minister that we have today. We have ministries that are comfortable teaching without persecution. Um, in the Bible days, they told you, you should prepare for it. You're going to have suffering. You're going to have persecution. Take it to them. It's going to be okay. If you get killed, your blood will go in the ground and cry out, and then it'll, another anointing will fall on the Jump next person. It'll even be greater. So it was a different mindset. Now, here's the thing. God still uses the same type of training, but we're expecting a different outcome. Mm, we yes, just yes, want, yes, yes. man, we don't want no trouble. We ain't trying to call. We just want to teach. We want a crowd. We want a nice church. We want a nice house. We want a nice, nice living and a nice safe thing. But that's not what this ministry said you were signing up for. <laughs> so no, no. divine restraint was critical to produce this type of soldier. All right. And here's examples. <laughs> People, you know, if you're watching An this and, and they're saying, you know, where's the examples? Okay, here you go. Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness yeah. with the sheep and eventually a father-in-law before he was sent back into the place that he left. Right. 40 years, but nobody wants to preach that. No. We, we don't want to tell some young, young minister, look, you're going you're gonna to sit here for, for 15, 20 years, and you're going to go through all the ropes and learn all the aspects of ministry, and we're going to work you here and there and train you like you went through as a young minister. Yeah. And But now here you're, you know, late 50s, you've been to hell and back. We've all been through stuff, but you know what? We still have our passion. We still have our purpose. Why? Because we were taught young, these are things you're going to expect, and this is what is going to happen. Yes, and Don is in his late fifties. I'm I'm mid, but yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not in my late fifties, brother. I was giving you, I was giving you some grace, man. a little bit there, boy. Well, David was <laughs> hidden in a cave, man, for in the wilderness before he came to this place. I mean, how many caves? He went to like three different caves, which yep. is something else. People talk about the cave of Abdullah. That wasn't the only cave David had to hide out in. No, I mean he hid out in a, a couple different caves and had the opportunity to to get back at Saul. Even when Saul went in there, they go the restroom and David was hiding in the cave and he cut off a little piece of his robe. Yes, he did. All and right, let me ask you this. You're talking about David in the cave in more than one, and it, which is true. Most people maybe not read the Bible enough to see that. <laughs> so in these times of loneliness, what we call, or even isolation, when you refer to the concept of a cave, don't you think that honestly, and we all have it to some level, our pride gets dealt with <laughs> and understanding the purpose of humility and being able to be released and walk out our gifting? Yeah, I do. I do. I think that being humbled situationally is not God's objective. His objective is not just to humble us to get us through the circumstance. That's why a lot of people uh, feign. I use the word feign. It's an old English word meaning to fake or to pretend. Mm. To feign humility, which is what the Bible calls false humility. That means um, I, I'm humbled because I'm trapped, and that's the only way out. But internally, I'm angry, I'm upset, I still, I got, you know, I want retaliation, I want this mm, or this. Mm, that's mm. not humility. And so that, you can, you can feign humility and get through a circumstance, but not stop the cycle. Because God, real humility, mm. brokenness, the brokenness and a contrite spirit, he says, this is the man I revive. Right. So people want revival, and they sometimes they call relief from pressure spiritual revival. And it's two different things. We need, Barry, and we should want what comes out of those seasons of patience, of the <laughs> cave, of loneliness. Watch this. How many worship songs did David write while in his own wilderness. Oh, and on and on and on. I mean, even, you know, the songs, even of the great hymnals that were written, you know, in the, uh, uh, in the cleft of the rock, you know, the oh, guy yeah. on the, on the, in the ship 
trapped at sea, hiding onto a rock, and he gets the revelation that that's how God is to us. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. trying to be in kill, holding on to his best, and then the storm crashes, he's able to get up on the rock, and then he gets rescued, which is a real story of the guy that wrote that song. So the songs weren't written in a studio by what was the latest jam and a demographic study on what people want to hear. They were written from expressions of people's lives <laughs> that came out of dark places and the glory of God enlightened mm. their spirit and they were changed mm -hmm. because of it. How, 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 short, how much would we shorten our worship songs Woo. today if we took out the oh, 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 <laughs> there was nothing else to see about. I'm sorry. I, I had I had to go there. Forgive me. I know somebody's going to give us some comment on that. All right. So this time of divine restraint, Barry. This time <laughs> of the cave of, of the of the wilderness. We're developing patience, but don't you think too? It's it's dealing with our character that is absolutely necessary to define us for apostolic ministry. Man, it that's why David went through multiple caves and why other guy Joseph went through multiple deals because each one dealt with a different part of his life. Some of the things we know from scripture, some of them God didn't even tell us why he was it, he designed a particular type of trial. Particular types of trials especially when they're very specific, are designed to touch on certain things, pride, mm. lust, whatever, that God knows it's vital that he touch and make sensitive so that when you get near to that area in the future, something reminds you of what God has done Come on. through you and to you during that period. And, <clears throat> and I think that's why you know uh, uh, Paul spent 14 years in Arabia after his supernatural encounter, you know, God took him out there, but now he put him at the feet of Gamiel, which was a tremendous teacher. teacher. I mean, he oh, was like yeah, the phenomenal. most, the best at the time of someone that had been converted and were preaching the understanding of Christ from the Old Testament all the way to the New Testament. In that time of wilderness, it, Paul's revelation opened up and then he got divine instruction on how it worked, and that's what those times of isolation are supposed to produce in us. Well, you know, even it even says in verse 17, Galatians 1, 17, he said, I didn't go up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. And I, oh, in other yeah, words, yeah, I wasn't going good. to hang out with the latest crowd. Right. I was on an assignment. And, you know, yeah. I mean, so he did. He has this supernatural encounter, but then goes goes for this long season of preparation. Yeah, and, and I didn't put this text in there, but the next text says, and whoever they are makes no difference to me. That's what it says. <laughs> oh, and people my. leave out those scripts. I left it out, and I, that's the kind of stuff now, I, when I go back, like I was thinking, I'd go back and put that in. Because you know what? It shows you even the character of Paul. He was a spunky, self-driven man, but he also submitted. But he was like, I don't care who they are. They're like, come up and see these men in prominence. I don't, I don't care who they are. It make no difference to me. But I'll go do it because I know it's the right thing to right. do. And see, somebody that's weak would look at him and say, oh, you see that attitude? Somebody that's strong is going to look at him and say, bring them to me. Yeah, bring them That's here. a warrior right worshiper there. right that's there. He ain't going to bow underneath, him underneath. We just need to make sure he's teaching right because... He's going to make headway. We just need to make he makes the right way. <laughs> wow. So, so our time in the wilderness, our, our time of divine restraint, our time hidden, listen, that's the time, y'all, that you receive mm -hmm. your revelation, the, the purpose of your calling to ministry, and our instruction that comes by the Holy Ghost, and it, many times by the Holy Spirit, through seasoned men and women who have been where we are in our process and they're not trying to hold us down. They're trying to help us understand the purpose yeah. to move us on, Barry. You know, and people can be in various stages of their Christian walk, and it's like um, an Aquila and Priscilla situation. I mean, mm, and, and as yeah. I've gotten older in my walk, I see sometimes some people will be an Aquila Priscilla to me. And if you're not familiar with the story in the book of Acts, Paulus was preaching, and he was preaching a good, strong message of repentance. Aquila and Priscilla, a local a, a couple of elders there, uh, pulled him to the side and mm -hmm. said, "Look, we ain't trying to take. We ain't trying to do what you do. We're not saying we got a bigger grace than you, but the message you're preaching needs to be a little more all-encompassing. Christ also 
um, died so you can teach people about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He also died for healing. He also mm. died for, for you know, these other things, for deliverance. And, he, he, and it says, and he upgraded him. Now, why I'm saying this is important, because these are times that God takes us in where we reevaluate what we previously believed. I mean, I recently had somebody that um, talked to me, in which I do this often, but I was do, talk, talking about the prophetic, and I was teaching on the prophetic, and I was talking about some things, and they said, well, I always see everything negatively. You know, I see all the things that go wrong. And I was at, because I've been there, I was able to say, I understand totally. That's the first phase. The next phase is you start to see redemptive purpose. You ask yourself when you see it, now this thing that I see, what can I say to, to, to bring them closer to their redemptive purposes? But Barry, and, how long did it take you in, in your life and ministry yeah, to move from headed. there to yeah. there? And that's exactly where I was headed. I was going to say, but it took me um, trial, tribulation, rejection, isolation, All that being told about. I'm not even really prophetic because I, I'm only saying I'm just causing division. Because I, But no one was giving me instruction on what to do with it. And once somebody did, boom, it upgraded completely from that day forward. I had a positive message every time instead of a negative, no matter what I saw spiritually. Because I learned that I had to... Being a man of God means, I, and a man of faith means I, I see the negative, then I see the will of God, and I superimpose the will of God over the will of whatever else is going but on. But you were still able to receive the challenge and the correction and the training to move it to a different dimension. It was, but it has to restructure your belief system because most of the time we build things in us like I get people all the time that tell me well I know the baptism of the Holy Spirit isn't for me it's for some people but it's not for me and they'll quote one text on it and they'll they'll say because I've tried and tried for years and I still hadn't got it so I don't believe it's for me and then I just say well here's the thing if I take you to this text and show you that it is for you it is for your children it is for your children's children and it's for ever those that are even are to come that call on the name of the Lord yeah. Would then you believe me? How of course, you... they, there's a scripture. Right? That's what Peter said. This is not just us. This is for us. This is for you. This is for your children. For the children to come right. who call on the name of the Lord. Right. So, so, so ministries and groups of, of thinking that don't believe in those hide those scriptures from public. God movement. takes denominations through wilderness periods too. There's many of them in the wilderness mm -hmm. and have been for years. Wow. And until they switch some of their beliefs, it's not going to revive. So the only choice they have is to become more secular or become more relatable in the natural. But here's a problem. When you try to outdo the world being the world, you're moving in financial categories that, that you're not even supposed to be in, don't have to be in. You're moving in other arenas that aren't your stick with your specialty. And the specialty is to bring the presence of God in, have an experience with the Lord, have a definitive message of the gospel, and bring the glory of God and the presence of God, the focus of every single meeting. When that is, that's something the secular world cannot imitate and Ooh. won't imitate, won't even get near it. Okay, so when he was in that 15-year span, apparently he was researching and being trained and retaught and re-looking oh, yeah. at all the Old Testament yeah. scriptures so he would understand them in the light of the new revelation that the Holy Spirit was giving him, correct? Mm-hmm, 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 yeah. Yeah, of course he was. I mean, he, you know, the Bible talks about often where Jesus, even at the end of Luke, it says that he walked along the road of Emmaus and he took the apostles, this is before, this was first, uh, before Paul, but um, he took the apostles and it says he began to speak of himself from the beginning of scriptures all the way up until now. Yes, he did. So God's will was, and all they had, people, was the Old Testament. The, the, these scriptures and these books, that's what they were seeing Christ in. I know churches today, they don't even preach out of the Old Testament because they feel it's so not about Jesus. When Jesus taught them everything about himself from the Old Testament. From the Old Testament. It was just a little <laughs> Biff kind of moment, you know, it's kind of silly. But uh, that's the way it goes on here. But he, he was taught and, and retaught. Here's it, Don. He was retaught 
what he was a he was a master. The scripture says he was a Pharisee of Phar- He was a learned. He was a teacher. He was a teacher's teacher. He was a leader's leader of what he did. So he had to relearn the way he saw the scripture, applied the scripture, and understood the scripture. And those are things that happen to us in wilderness times. Well, you know, even in a couple of these next verses, Barry, it, it proves scripturally a season that there was, that there's, I mean, it says right here in Galatians, he was unknown to the churches in, in Judea by, right. by his face. He had never, he had not had face to face. He had not been there and held a conference or No, meeting. and all they heard about him was negative things. That's exactly right. They had only heard negative testimonies about this guy and everybody just about thought he was fake. It says they were scared of him except for Barnabas which Barnabas shows up throughout Scripture kind of rescuing people. I mean, right. John Mark, when Paul kicked him out, Barnabas went and got him and said, wait, 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 he's still good. Let's just get him over here for a minute. Okay, well, we got to talk about this verse right here because <laughs> know, right? there's so many different angles here. Watch this, Galatians 2, 2. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. So he speaks one thing to one group and then privately to the people of reputation, he speaks another. Kind of like Jesus gave a parable to the multitudes and yeah. then he talks to the disciples differently. Why? Explain that. What? what I mean, well, he's still hidden, but he's still dealing with well, and, and this is interesting, too, because when it says he communicated the gospel unto them, of which I preach among the, the Gentiles, they ask him, basically, they said, all right, tell us what you're telling people. Tell us what you're telling people. And then they ask him to come uh, uh, to those people that he was kind of answering to, like the, the main people among the group, the main elders. You know, they pulled him to the side and, and wanted to hear and ask him a, the next layer of questions. Now, where did you get that? And what about this? And they didn't dispute him in front of people, but they pulled him to the side and began to challenge, like, why do you believe it that way? And where do you connect that with this? And how, why did you say that was a parallel to this? Where did you get that? People see that today as an attack, but when I grew up, it was just being accountable to what you were saying. Wow. wow. You know, so that's wow. another thing. Well, he doesn't appreciate my revelation. I'm like, yeah, he does. He's just, you got to be able to give an answer for what you believe, though. But here's the thing. It's he didn't said, rush out, Barry. He no. didn't rush out in a minute. We, 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 we got to keep bringing it back to this point for all of the you watch it. Yeah. He allowed the Holy Spirit to educate, to train, to develop, and he was patient in the Lord's timing. We don't even like that word anymore. Man, it's the last phrase of this sentence that gets me, and this is what it says of that text in, uh, in Galatians uh, 2.2. 2. It says, but privately to them that were of reputation, least by any means I should run or had run in vain. He's saying... Just in case anything I said I think is right, but I'm really off a little bit on it. Now, here is a master scholar that knows the Bible better than the people My he's standing goodness. before, but understands he's, not com- he's coming into revelations that he's new to. And he realizes he could be faulty in some of the things that he's thinking. This shows the character of of Paul's spirit. And that's what I was mm. saying earlier about real humility. So you could, some people, I've, I've read commentaries where Paul makes that, and you know, of, of reputation and whoever they are makes no difference to me. And he, and, I, and, and those that are hassling you about circumcision in the name, I wish they just cut themselves off. And they're like, see, he was so full of, of pride, but that's not what you see. When it came down to it, Paul knew where to humble himself and who to humble himself to. And then he knew where not to humble himself and where he needed to be strong and bold. So he knew the difference. And, and these types of texts show us Paul to the right person. He said, look, man, I give you guys permission to check me. Okay, because I'm going to, you know, Paul, he was sure going to check them. Oh, sure. And that's is. why. But he's saying, I give you permission in case anything I'm saying is, is off. But now, but when I go back out there, right. I'm running at full force again. Right. Promotion comes from who, Barry? The Lord. The Lord. So how many times have we watched in our combined 70 plus years of ministry yeah. 
public recognition from ministers override anything else and it ends up destroying them, their marriage, their mm -hmm. ministry, many people, sheep scattered because it was all simply about the public recognition. Well, I finally made it. I'm on Charisma Magazine, and I'm speaking at this conference. Yeah. Well, you know, and that goes back to leadership stuff, too. I often think of like John Maxwell stuff where he says, you know, if you're a leader, you can be a leader without a position. It's going to spill out yeah, over anywhere, yeah, that's anywhere. So good. That's and so then good. you being consistent with that, it's soon going to be evident that you're actually the one leading. And you may say it's been like that in my church or at my work for a long period, but you have to understand that God is the one who promotes. So he sees that, and he won't let you, when you're cooked, when you're cooked in the <laughs> oven and you're ready to be taken out, if they don't take you out, he'll take you out. He will. He will. My, 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 Man, my. this is such a, a, a good um, subject matter as we're going down through the preparation of apostles. And this is lesson two. There's lesson one you can go back and find on, on Rev House and God's Garage. Yes. And, um, and look these episodes up and see some of the things in the past. We're going to continue now. Uh, in our next uh, session, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the Word of God and the shaping of the Word in the Apostles' life and ministry and how it shifts and changes through these preparation times. The Word of God, Barry, has to be our foundation, not what comes down from headquarters. In the Word of God, until the Word of God tried him, in that first episode we did, talking about Joseph in Psalm 105, 17 through 19, until it tried him, until God was finished with that season. But the Word, the, the prophetic Word spoken over him is what tried him. 45 seconds, Barry, look at your camera, and what would you challenge young ministers that are, their eyes are being opened, they're seeing, and they're hungry for what we're developing and sharing through the Yeah, scripture. don't hide stuff. Um, you know, get in there, separate the things in your life, have enough sense to separate them into categories, and weigh them out. Look at them. This is where my personal life is now. This is where my purity and my holiness. Let's be honest with yourself at least and somebody close to you. This is where my ministry skills exist in this time. If you're one of those people that's training for ministry and you're still saying, well, I don't want to do that, but I'll do this and I don't want to do that, I can tell you you're going to run around the bush and hardly get anywhere as far as the fresh anointings are until you just humble yourself and say, God, whatever you want me to do, whatever you want me to be, yes. I'll find a way to do it in you. Because God God is bringing people out of the wilderness. He's bringing people out of tough situations. And this is something we're finding out here at Rev House in Tulsa even, that God is restoring people and he's building leaders inside yes. of people that are overcoming the things that they've been battling. Yes. You know, right as we're going, listen, go to RevHouse.org, check us out. God's Garage is involved in there. If you want to give, text to give, 918-417-1993. We love you. Nothing you can do about it. Doc? Success to the kingdom and success to you. Goodbye.